It can be brutal enough just growing up a girl. Then add poverty, addiction, and God to the mix. Armed with a gun and a prayer, Emma and her cat bravely go where too many girls have gone before. It's a war and we gotta win it. The film Small Time will be playing at the Rockport Film Festival on Saturday, November 14th, 2020. We will be discussing Small Time with the film's writer, director, co-producer, DP, and co-editor, Niav Conti. Conti's films span darkly humorous investigations of the transgressive and taboo, intimate and troubling coming-of-age portraits, acutely contemporary sci-fi, and cutting-edge machinima. She is an active freelance director, cinematographer, screenwriter, and editor in New York City. Hi, Nia. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Right. Absolutely. I'm, I'm excited about your, your film, Small Time, that is showing at the Rockport Film Festival this year. Um, it's, it's great that you submitted where you are from, um, right now. You're in Pennsylvania during this time. Yeah. Uh, thanks for thanks for tuning in from Pennsylvania, but you're originally from New York, correct? Yeah, I, I generally live in New York, but uh, I'm out in Pennsylvania currently, and that's where we shot the entirety of the film as well. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, I can definitely see that from some of the kind of from the nature scenes. It definitely seems like a Pennsylvania setting. So the the story of uh, is about a young girl who almost um, has kind of had like a series of unfortunate events happen in her life all at the same time. She's living with her grandfather uh, because her mom is an addict. Her grandfather dies, and then she goes to live with her mom. And then just that doesn't work out. I won't ruin it for everyone, but it portrays her interaction with that lifestyle and she, that she's kind of thrusted into. I love the use of humor that you have interspersed with the serious moments throughout the film. Is this a genre that you typically seek out and um, when you're deciding a storyline? Um, I'm so glad that you mentioned the humor because for me, it's like an essential part of this film working. Um, and generally people don't like talk about the humor in it, uh, which I think is very clearly there, but it's a subtle humor. It's not a ha ha humor at all. Right. And it's like a sort of provides a counterbalance to the very dark film that it is. Mm -hmm. uh, this kind of awkward, dark humor inserted throughout to help us through. Yes. And, you know, for me, that's very realistic. You know, you have to, bring humor to to handle the hardest situations and that's what the character does um mm -hmm. in her own way and it's kind of her her way of getting through but uh, i would say my particular brand of humor because i don't know how to do comedy um is like that awkward humor where you're not totally sure that you're supposed to laugh but you're kind of laughing anyway <laughs> <laughs> so I just try and make the spectator as uncomfortable as possible through their desire to laugh. <laughs> right. It is definitely a comic relief, I would say, you know, just kind of that kind of that juxtaposition of her innocence and, you know, it missed all the chaos and almost like bombs going off around her, <laughs> so to speak. Um, it was it was really great. I really enjoyed that balance. Thank you. So what draws you to this kind of coming of age uh, story or subject matter? What drew you to that? Uh, I guess, it, well, it started out as a short film called Joyride, um, which we shot and is incorporated now into the feature film uh, as the earliest part. Um, and we kind of jump around in time constantly. But uh, that was inspired just from a, a, a memory I had growing up, uh, which then I changed quite a bit and dramatized uh, to make it into a better film, of course. But um, just going, going back and like remembering the nuances of a particular situation was what got me there. And then when we developed it into a feature, it was... Uh, became more of a story and like where are we going to bring this girl and everyone around her and um <clears throat> but I also tried to kind of find my way back into anchoring it with personal memories uh certain scenes which uh could kind of inform it and bring it 
bring me into a, a intimate place with the the script and the story. So are there any, I know there's a, there's a lot of narrow escapes for the main character. She's a sweet, innocent girl, kind of almost like carrying a little kitten through a war zone, so to speak. Um, so as, as a mom of a girl about, of about that age, I noticed myself kind of looking through my, my fingers quite a bit with some of the scenarios that she put her, where she was in. Um, so it was, and it was perfectly, it was, it was just the pace of real life, very slow paced, um, but definitely contained some suspenseful moments uh, with what some of the things that she was going through. Uh, was that a challenge to achieve kind of that, kind of that emotional, kind of almost quiet suspense throughout all of the, the plot line? And, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Um, I mean, I think the emotional suspense is the plot line. Sure. Uh, for, for me, there's not, it's not like a plot driven film and the story, you know, there's about that tenuous, uh, you know, relationship to whatever is happening. Sure. Um, so, I mean, sure it was a challenge, but that was the challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, of telling the story was to uh, tell it in a way that the the story was about playing that very very uncomfortable line yes of what is going to happen here and and that being a very real thing for young girls growing up um, you know there's so much uh, just in, in how they're looked at and spoken about, you know, there's danger there that is kind of implied. Uh, and the film is a little bit about that too, you know? Uh, so that was in every scene in mm -hmm. its own little way, you know? Mm -hmm. Definitely, I definitely saw that and felt it. <laughs> uh. <laughs> So there's some really great quotes um, throughout the, the film. One of my favorites is when she's, um, uh, she's in a confessional with a priest and, and they're talking about something that she, she had just done and to um, a friend from school, I'll say. But um, she says, I'm not entirely sure that's a sin because she's a jerk face. You know, and that's, that was one of those moments where I had to bust out laughing because you know, <laughs> I know that age group and that's exactly what they would say. <laughs> So are there some, are there some favorite um, scenes that you really felt that like you connected with throughout the film or any favorite quotations? Um, there are actually a lot of quotations that come at like everyone who worked on the film, uh, but they kind of come out in the moment and it's just like, ah. Um, one of my faves is, uh, um, you can't just pray. You got to pray hard. Yeah. Yes. That's a great one. <laughs> Sadie has the best uh, quotes in my opinion, yeah. as well as uh, it's a war and we got to win it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, which we kind of inserted into the synopsis as well, because that's uh, a nice one. Mm -hmm. But as far as scenes go, um, I think maybe my favorite scene is, uh, I don't want to give it away. Oh, okay. In the bathroom where uh, they're talking about kind of uh, cooking and baking and uh, a very simple but palpable scene between her and the woman who's at the house she's staying at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. That's one of the scenes that you mentioned, a, a bathroom. I love the restroom scene between her and her grandmother. That just was like the epitome of what women are like in the restroom, you know? <laughs> well, that was kind of like made to counterbalance the confessional um, yeah. scene too. I see that, yes. In these little boxes, speaking whatever needs to be spoken. <laughs> Yeah, the sounds and just pulling out the toilet paper like just it, it was like perfect yeah <laughs> the pee. yes yeah exactly the sounds of all of it <laughs> so um do you have any anything that are that i haven't mentioned maybe that are lesser known things about the film that you'd love to 
you know, draw to the, to the viewer? I guess just that uh, this was Audrey, uh, Audrey Grace Marshall, who's the star. Yes. Um, and an amazingly talented. She was amazing. Girl. Um, this was her joyride, the short, and that's the first part of this uh, feature, sort of first exploration of what acting is and what a set is. Like she wrapped so green, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then throughout, she kind of embraced what acting is. It was just so beautiful to watch. And in each part, you know, she grew up between she was, I think, seven uh, in part one, and then part two, she was maybe eight and a half, and then part three, nine something. Yeah. Uh, and so as she matured and her acting matured, it was really interesting to, to see how she approached different scenes in different ways, you know, uh, as she got older. And now she's... Uh, uh, rock and actress who's uh, she's coming out in a hbo uh the flight attendant i think um okay. series uh next month i think it's coming out and she's got a recurring role she's been in quite a few features like she's doing great That's um great. but this was like her discovery right project. <laughs> and the one funny thing I can say about Audrey is that um, originally in the script I had, uh, because she's spends so much time with foul-mouthed people, um, I had given her you know, a couple of choice swear words to say here and there at moments because it seems normal that she would, you know, use those words as well. But uh, Audrey refused categorically to swear like wow. she will do anything and is so game and so professional and so excited to be part of every situation you put her in uh -huh. but refused to use a, a curse word <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> so i had to just give up that battle right right <laughs> like her mom was okay with it uh you know but she was like no i cannot say it Wow, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> I found that really funny. That's great. That's great. So, um, how how long has the film been out now? Well, we uh, uh, premiered at Cinequest the live version in March, uh, but then that got shut down halfway through. <laughs> right. So. Then, uh, then we went to the online version of Cinequest, which was just last month. Uh, and now we're in a couple of festivals going on currently through January, I'd say. But we had kind of a, every, everything died and I was just like, uh, I don't know what's happening. I'm just going to uh, sit no. with this for a while. I can only imagine. I'm, kudos <laughs> for, for weathering that storm, that's for sure. <laughs> So you haven't really had you haven't had a chance to really win any awards with this one because it's fairly fairly new. But um, well, we won the audience award at Cinequest. Oh, wonderful! Well, congratulations! Yes, yeah. just That's like two weeks ago, I or last week I found out. So mm -hmm. that was Rockport. a nice. Yeah, I know that Rockport, um, the film festival folks, recommended uh, that I, we talk to you because it's one of definitely one of their their favorites. So. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure more awards are to come. Um, from I, some hope, I hope. I hope. <laughs> I, I don't have the inside scoop of, on anything, so just to let you know, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, well, thank you so much, Nia, for joining us today, and I wish you the best. Um, all the best in Pennsylvania and New York, where you're from. I hope everything um, continues to go in a positive direction. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Mm -hmm.